Sitting patiently on its launch pad in the Central Asian desert, Soyuz MS-25 is ready once again to begin its journey to the International Space Station, and we're in the final minutes of the countdown. You are looking live at Launch Pad 6, Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where that Soyuz 2.1A booster stands fully fueled once again, ready for launch to send an American astronaut, a Roscosmos cosmonaut, and a spaceflight participant from Belarus into orbit, this time on a two-day journey to reach their destination, the International Space Station. Good morning from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center. Countdown clocks are ticking backward for the launch of the Soyuz MS-25 spacecraft atop its Soyuz booster at 7.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Central Time, 8.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Eastern Time, 5.36 and 10 seconds p.m. Baikonur Time. At the launch site, you can see that the gantry arms are spreading. They'll move into a horizontal position relative to the launch vehicle that was fully fueled uh, several hours ago by launch engineers in Baikonur, a process that was completed without any incident. The launch control team in Baikonur reports all systems are go for launch with no issues being worked as the countdown enters its final phase. And you're looking inside the descent module of the Soyuz vehicle at NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson, who in just 34 minutes and 20 seconds will begin her third flight into space, joined on uh, this mission to the International Space Station by Roscosmos cosmonaut and Soyuz commander Oleg Novitsky and spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya of Belarus, the first Belarusian to fly in space. Today, unlike uh, the first launch attempt on Thursday, because of orbital mechanics, results in a 34-orbit two-day journey to the International Space Station with a launch window of 25 seconds in duration, a launch into a phase angle of 201.8 degrees, a rather wide corridor because of the long phasing required for this Soyuz to reach the International Space Station. Docking is scheduled now on Monday at 10.09 a.m. Central Time, 11.09 a.m. Eastern Time to the Prashal node module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. In Baikonur, the temperature is 48 degrees Fahrenheit, partly cloudy skies for today's launch attempt. Once the hatches are open between the newly arrived Soyuz and the station on Monday, Dyson, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya will be greeted by Station Commander Oleg Kononenko of Roscosmos and his crewmates, Alexander Grabenkin and Nikolai Chub, and NASA astronauts Laurel O'Hara, Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, and Jeanette Epps. After 12 days on board, enabling Vasilevskaya to conduct experiments on behalf of Belarus researchers, Novitsky, Vasilevskaya, and O'Hara will depart in the Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft, the new departure date, April 6th, heading for a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. Dyson will remain on board the station through September, returning home at that time with Kononenko and Chub on Soyuz MS-25. Dyson will have spent six months in space on this or third flight into space, while Kononenko and Chub will come home after completing a full year on orbit. We're at the T-minus 32-minute mark in the countdown. Again, all systems are reported go. No issues reported for today's launch attempt. This launch uh, for Dyson to the space station mirrors that of Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Grabenkin, who launched at the station as part of the SpaceX Crew-8 Dragon earlier this year, uh, providing a reciprocal crew exchange capability, maintaining safe and continuous space station operations. The initial attempt to launch Soyuz MS-25 on Thursday was scrubbed at the T-minus 22nd mark when the automatic launch sequencer cut off the countdown. The crew was never in any danger as the Soyuz booster was safed, enabling the crew to be extracted from the Soyuz within an hour, after which they returned to their cosmonaut hotel crew quarters to brush up on some final training. Engineers in Baikonur determined that the cause of the scrub was a low voltage rating in the booster's first stage electrical system. Batteries were changed and retested Friday morning, setting the stage for today's launch attempt. Operator 5. 
the service tower has been made horizontal. Copy. Evacuation to the safe zone was completed for the personnel. Copy. As you look uh, at the Soyuz MS-25 on the launch pad at Baikonur approaching the T-minus 30-minute mark, here in Mission Control in Houston, uh, we're about to do a shift handover from Orbit 1 to Orbit 2. The Orbit 1 team uh, has been on console throughout the course of the overnight hours and just finished supervising the flawless docking of the SpaceX Dragon cargo ship to uh, the Harmony Module's Zenith docking port. That occurred uh, less than an hour ago. That cargo Dragon uh, delivering some three tons of supplies and science equipment to the International Space Station that will be on board for about a five-week delivery mission. This live view of the uh, Soyuz MS-25 on the launch pad at Baikonur, again, liftoff scheduled for 7.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Central Time, 5.36 and 10 seconds p.m. in Baikonur. Atop that booster strapped into the seats of the descent module are NASA's Tracy Dyson, Oleg Novitsky of Roscosmos, and spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya of Belarus. Novitsky is the Soyuz commander, is in the center seat of the Soyuz MS-25. Dyson is seated to his right. You've seen scenes of Dyson uh, from interior cameras. Uh, Vasilevskaya is seated to the left of Novitsky. To operator one, all the preparations have been complete and uh, the service personnel has been evacuated into... Once uh, the crew climbed aboard uh, the Soyuz and strapped into their respective seats, there were leak checks that were performed uh, on their Sokol launch and entry suits. Everything has checked out in great shape. And as uh, you can hear from time to time, there is that traditional music being piped up to the crew in the descent module. That is traditional to help them relax in the final stages of a countdown for launch. Copy. You are go to sign off. And now uh, this footage that was recorded earlier showing uh, some of the activities again on a partly cloudy day uh, in Baikonur. The uh, launch day began several hours ago uh, as the crew departed uh, their Cosmonaut Hotel crew quarters to traditional farewell music and boarded a bus for the 40-minute ride to the integration and sit-up facility at Building 254 inside the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Thank you, thank you. And as you see, uh, a large crowd of ball wishers uh, two days after that first launch attempt, still on the scene, greeting uh, the crew and wishing them be best wishes as they boarded the bus to head out to their suit-up facility. And as usual, the, the buses, uh, the prime crew in the first bus, the backup crew in the second bus, left the parking lot outside the Cosmonaut Hotel 
for this 40-minute uh, journey into the Cosmodrome to the Site 254 suit-up facility. After arriving at the integration building, each crew member uh, underwent final medical exams, suited up in their Soka launch and entry suits, and entered uh, this room, uh, divided uh, from their friends and families and officials by a protective pane of glass to maintain quarantine, and conducted uh, leak checks on their suits one by one. Tracy Dyson was first into the uh, mock-up of the Soyuz seat. There's Novitsky on the left, Vasilevskaya on the right. Each crew member, one by one, uh, underwent these uh, pressure checks to make sure that their suits were free of any leaks. These uh, leak checks uh, typically take about uh, 20 minutes to complete as uh, one by one uh, this ensures that uh, the Sokol launch and entry suits are airtight and ready uh, to support uh, the launch by the Soyuz MS-25 into orbit. And you see uh, part of the crowd of uh, family members and well-wishers on the other side of that protective pane of glass. As you watch uh, this video uh, that was captured uh, earlier today before the crew headed uh, for the launch pad, uh, the current status, uh, we're at uh, T minus 23 minutes and counting to the launch of Soyuz MS-25, the crew aboard uh, the descent module of the uh, Soyuz vehicle. We had to do this morning. Um, yeah, good. It was, it was good. And the, the other thing we did, we kind of made our own tradition. We, you know, we signed the door to our room, and we usually put the date. Well, we, we put today's date underneath <laughs> the other date, so, oh, yeah. so now we, we, we have two dates. Yeah. But that's going to be it. We're, <laughs> we're going today. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, they kind of thought, like, we weren't even, we weren't even, like, three minutes of the familiarity, the, the fact that we're all, um, uh, we woke up with a pretty good vibe this morning, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's um, uh, the, the grass at our home, so it's a, it's a very nostalgic song about, um, you know, being in space and into it, so. Oh, yeah. Tanner's got a good song, too. What? I'm <laughs> talking to Mike. I can't hear you. No, I just said Tammy actually shared a song with us. She sang a song for us. Oh. But I don't think we're going to get it from out of her right now. They might have iPods, but I'm kind of hoping that Marina will sing for us. She's got a well, beautiful you're voice. You're going to have to sing, too, though, probably. If she runs out of songs, I'll back her up. She did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't say national anthem, because that was, no. that was <laughs> that's scary. That was, I saw your more, most recent video. You gonna go to the same place? Just follow Ksenia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Follow yeah. Go wherever she tells us. Yeah. You're safe it that way. How are you doing, Ksenia? You good? <laughs> cool. Good. We had hot chocolate this morning, so. I bet that was good. It was tasty. We hadn't had hot chocolate this morning. 
Tracy Dyson uh, there you saw exchanging words with her husband yes today uh, saying uh, we have a good vibe for today stay this way I'd just like to board the capsule and uh, fly our commander told us that we have already been through a dress rehearsal and everything will, should be good today. And I love you so very much. You are my large family. Thank you. Thank you for supporting us. It's such a great pleasure to have your support. And it's a great experience. Well, on the one hand, it's great to uh, take shorter time to fly to the station. But on the other hand, now we will have more time to adapt to the microgravity and to admire our beautiful planet. Hello. You guys are very quiet. I have a question. Do you have uh, anything for April Fool's Day ready in your pocket? Well, maybe. Everything's been great. All is well. All right, well, see you soon. She's leaving. Goodbye. How many times have you uh, had a launch delay before, Oliver? Is this your first? It's the first time ever that we have our launch rescheduled. Well, I had it many times before, but for us it was the first time. It's okay. Everything is good. Ken Bowersox, NASA's Associate Administrator for Space Operations, having an opportunity to talk uh, to Oleg Novitsky, and then uh, Roscosmos, Belarus, and NASA managers talk to the crew. You sleep? How are you feeling? Uh, we are rested. Everything is great. And uh, the weather is better today. It's kind of sunny. Right. So everything will be beautiful. Well, you'll have, you'll take a little longer to get to the ISS, uh, but I think that for those who are first flyers, first time flyers, it would be great to admire the Earth. And we wish you all the best, have a great mission, uh, be uh, quiet, be um, uh, strong, and we love you. We will be waiting for you on the ground. Then, uh, of course, the familiar scene of the crew members leaving that Site-254 integration building. This allows Novitsky, the Soyuz commander, to report that he and his crewmates were ready to proceed to the launch pad. Final uh, farewells as the crew boarded the bus for the trip out to Launch Site 31, a trip that uh, ultimately took about an hour to complete. And the buses uh, leaving the parking lot 
of the 254 integration building, that suit up facility. And the bus is arriving at the launch pad with the rocket already fully fueled. Three crew members uh, escorted uh, to the stairs, the stairwell at the base of the Soyuz 2.1A booster. They climbed a few stairs, uh, waved goodbye to well-wishers, and entered uh, the elevator there for the ride to the top of the Soyuz rocket to board their spacecraft, which they've now been aboard for about two hours or so. And there is the elevator uh, carrying the three crew members uh, to the access to their Soyuz booster and uh, the access port to which they enter the uh, Soyuz MS-25 spacecraft, which is encapsulated in the upper stage of the Soyuz. And we are back live now with a view of Soyuz 2.1A with the crew on top of that vehicle as we are now at T-minus 13 minutes and counting. At the time of launch, at 7.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Central Time, 8.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Eastern Time, the International Space Station and its seven crew members will be flying 262 statute miles over the South Pacific, west of South America. The uh, Key milestones on the ascent uh, for the uh, three crew members. After a liftoff, first stage separation of the liquid fueled solid uh, rockets uh, will take place at the one minute 58 second mark. The launch shroud jettison that encapsulates the actual capsule in which the crew is uh, strapped in will occur at the, t at the 2 minute 33 second mark into ascent. At uh, the 4 minute 37 second mark, we'll have second stage shutdown and separation. The third stage engine on the Soyuz booster will then fire for 4 minutes and 9 seconds with uh, third stage shutdown at the 8 minute 46 second mark, followed 3 seconds later by third stage separation. The automatic command will then be given to deploy uh, the Soyuz spacecraft's solar arrays and navigational antennas, and the chase will be on to reach the International Space Station on Monday, resulting in a docking to the Prashal node module on the Earth-facing side of the station's Russian segment, docking on Monday scheduled at 10.09 a.m. Central Time, 11.09 a.m. Eastern Time.
The uh, NASA delegation attending uh, today's launch has actually been in Baikonur since Sunday, the day before this uh, Soyuz booster rolled out to its launch pad. With the NASA delegation is NASA Public Affairs Officer Leah Cheshire, who filed this report a short time ago. Hi, Rob. We're here at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, standing by for the launch of NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson and the Soyuz MS-25 crew. We are at the viewing site just a couple of miles from the launch pad. This is where we were a couple of nights ago uh, when we were expecting launch on the initial attempt. Of course, there was some surprise when we had a scrub. However, the NASA contingent is still here along with Tracy's family and friends, and we are here to support her, and we're really excited to see her launch tonight. Uh, the temperature now is about mid 50, so a little bit warmer than we saw a couple of days ago and the crew is currently aboard the Soyuz spacecraft. Now, in the last couple of days, they've been reviewing their 34-orbit rendezvous procedures. Initially, you know, they were expecting a two-orbit rendezvous, so there are some additional procedures that they needed to look over to make sure they were prepared for this new phasing. So we are here standing by and looking forward to seeing Soyuz take to the skies tonight. With that, I will send it back to you, Rob. Thank you very much, Leah. We are at T-minus nine minutes, 27 seconds and counting to the launch of Soyuz MS-25. Uh, two key milestones that will be coming up in the final minute of the countdown. You can see at the bottom of your screen, there are two umbilical towers that are buttressed up against the side of the Soyuz booster. The first of those two umbilicals will retract at about the T-minus 30 second mark in the countdown. And then the key moment, the second of those two umbilicals will retract at about the T-minus 15 seconds mark. That will initiate the automatic launch sequence that will trigger the ignition of the first stage engines. That is what did not occur on Thursday at the T-minus 20 second mark, resulting in that launch abort that uh, we went through. Uh, although uh, the system did exactly what it was designed to do, it saved the vehicle, allowing the crew to be safely extracted less than an hour after the countdown was halted. So we'll keep a close eye on uh, the retraction of those two umbilicals in uh, the final minute of the countdown. We're approaching a T-minus eight minutes and counting at the T-minus seven minute mark. Pre-launch operations will be complete. The Soyuz booster will be declared ready for launch by the launch conductor at the blockhouse in Baikonur. And all telemetry will have been received from the rocket indicating that the primary and backup systems are set to support liftoff. As is the case with any launch to the International Space Station, the launch is precisely timed for the moment when the Earth's rotation places the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the plane or corridor of the orbit of the space station, which is inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. And because uh, today's orbital mechanics uh, requires a two-day rendezvous instead of a two-orbit rendezvous with basically a three-hour journey from launch to docking. Uh, there is a larger corridor for which uh, the Soyuz to enter to begin its chase to catch up to the International One Space Station. Copy. Cosbeke, this is launch lit. One minute the readiness, system is the ready. control is on board, everything is according to the schedule, and I will uh, tell you everything about the launch sequence. Uh, copy, we are ready for launch, everything is nominal on board. We're now at T-minus six minutes, 40 seconds and counting, as you heard through the interpreter. The launch conductor and Baikonur telling the crew that everything is in readiness for launch. Coming up in just a couple of seconds, uh, that launch conductor will insert a launch key in the launch bunker. This is a real key that transitions the launch sequence into the automatic mode for the final six minutes of the countdown. The space vehicle is ready for launch. Copy. Launch key inserted. T minus five minutes, 50 seconds and counting. 
Launch Control will soon report that the range at Baikonur is clear and that the Soyuz rocket is ready to begin its journey. The Soyuz 2.1A booster fueled with kerosene and liquid oxygen for an 8 minute 46 second ride to deliver Soyuz MS-25 into its preliminary orbit. Coming up on T-minus five minutes, all systems are go for launch. Purge in progress. The fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines currently being purged with nitrogen. This fire proofs uh, those fuel lines by removing excess vapors of fuel and oxidizer. T minus four minutes, 30 seconds and counting. At the T minus two minute, 45 second mark, the booster's fuel tanks will be pressurized for flight. T minus three minutes, 45 seconds until launch. Again, everything in readiness to send Tracy Dyson, Oleg Novitsky, and Marina Vasilevskaya skyward. Tracy Dyson about to embark on her third flight into space. Novitsky's fourth flight into space. He's already accrued 531 days of spaceflight experience. Vasilevskaya about uh, to begin her first flight into space, the first Belarusian to fly in space. Draining. Two minutes, 55 seconds and counting. The fuel tanks being drained of any excess fuel not required for the trip to orbit. The fuel tanks soon will be pressurized for flight to optimize the flow of fuel and to help add structural support to the rocket. Copy all reports. Pressurizations initiated. Pressurization. Pressurization confirmed. T minus two minutes and counting. All reports are confirmed and copied. In the next 20 seconds, the ground propellant feed will be terminated to the Soyuz booster. T-minus one minute, 30 seconds and counting. Coming up on the T-minus one minute mark, the Soyuz now going on internal power. About 20 seconds away from the retraction of that first umbilical. Team 
Vehicle to internal power. Ground vehicle. There's the retraction of the first umbilical, T minus 30 seconds and counting. All reports have been copied. Auto sequence initiated. Launch. Second umbilical now retracting. Ignition. This initiates engine start. Second. We now have engine ignition. Preliminary. Turbo pumps and engines up to flight speed, now at full throttle. Engines to maximum thrust. We have liftoff. Dyson, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya finally underway on a two-day journey to the International Space Station. All parameters are nominal. Good roll pitch and yaw program. Soyuz heading downrange, heading to the northeast from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. All thrusters are performing normally from the blockhouse in Baikonur. Forty seconds into the flight, all rocket performance is declared nominal at this point. Vehicle stabilization is performing nominally. Good vehicle stabilization, good first stage performance. 50 seconds, the pressure in uh, the manifolds is nominal. Everything is uh, good. Good engine performance. 50 seconds, pitch, your and roll are nominal. Should be heading into the regime of maximum dynamic pressure a moment or two from now. All parameters are of the booster are nominal. Everything is good on board. All is well. Novitsky reporting everything is good on board. Good vehicle parameters at the one minute 40 second mark into the flight. Parameters are uh, nominal. L Passing through max Q. Beach roll and you are uh, nominal. Good vehicle parameters. And we have first stage set. So the lateral boosters have separated. We confirm that and have the uh, Soyuz uh, now at uh, 28 statute miles in altitude, traveling about 3,300 miles an hour downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome at the 2 minute 25 second mark into the flight. 140 seconds into the flight, all parameters are nominal, all is good on board. Good reports up to the crew from the blockhouse in Baikonur as we uh, pass the 2 minute 40 second mark into the flight. This uh, second stage engine will burn for 2 minutes and 37 seconds. Launch route jettison has now been confirmed. 170 seconds into the flight, the vehicle stabilization is nominal and the uh, crew feeling well. Copy. This view inside, uh, momentarily inside, saw Novitsky and Vasilevskaya. Three and a half minutes into the flight, all reports are nominal from the blockhouse in Baikonur. Two hundred and twenty seconds into the flight, the flight is nominal. Uh, all is well on board. Copy, Kazbiki. Four minutes into the flight, the second stage engine is performing normally. It will shut down at the four minute 37 second mark into the flight. 
250 seconds. Yaw pitch and roll reported in good shape, good vehicle parameters, good stability. The third stage uh, oxidizer tank has been pressurized. Second stage has separated. We can and we have confirmation of second stage shutdown. Third stage engine up and running. Five minutes, six seconds into the flight. The uh, third stage will burn for four minutes and nine seconds in the final phase of the Soyuz MS-25's climb to its preliminary orbit. Vehicle stabilization is nominal. All is well on board and the crew are feeling well. So far so good at the five and a half minute mark into the flight. The third stage engine is performing as advertised. About three minutes of powered flight remaining. Liftoff occurred uh, on time at 7.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Central Time, 8.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Eastern Time. This uh, third stage engine is uh, providing about 67,000 pounds of thrust during its uh, four-minute uh, burn to deliver uh, the Soyuz to its preliminary orbit. The reports uh, are all good from Novitsky, the Soyuz commander and the center seat of the Soyuz descent module. Six minutes, 35 seconds into the flight. Two minutes of powered flight remaining. Into the flight, uh, the vehicle stabilization, stabilization is performing nominally. Mark seven minutes into the flight. Good reports continuing to come in from the blockhouse in Baikonur. Once the Soyuz separates from its third stage, control of its journey to the International Space Station will be in the hands of those flight controllers you're seeing in this balcony camera view from the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov outside of Moscow. The thruster uh, continues to fire. Seven minutes, 30 seconds into the flight. 150 seconds into the flight. The flight is nominal. One minute of powered flight remaining. All of the uh, Soyuz boosters parameters are normal. Good engine performance so far. Eight minutes into the flight. The crew is feeling well on board and all structural parameters of the vehicle are reported nominal. 30 seconds of powered flight remaining. Five hundred into the flight. Eight and a half minutes into the flight, the crew being told to prepare for third engine shutdown, third stage engine shutdown and spacecraft separation that we're standing by. Five hundred and twenty seconds into the flight. All parameters are nominal. Five hundred and we have third stage shutdown and third stage separation. Separation is confirmed. The command uh, now will be given to deploy the, the Soyuz solar arrays. That now underway. 
MCC Moscow. And the solar arrays and navigational antennas have all been deployed. Perfect ride to orbit for Tracy Dyson, Oleg Novitsky, and Marina Vasilevskaya. The two-day chase to catch up to the International Space Station now underway. Kazbiki, MCC Moscow. Kazbiki, MCC Moscow. Kazbiki, MCC Moscow, how do you copy? If you can hear me, could you please go to page 35? Kazbiki, MCC Moscow. This is Kazbek. How do you copy? We copy you loud and clear. How do you copy us? I copy you loud and clear. Excellent. So the KDU uh, repress uh, has already deactivated. Yes, that's correct. And archive are open. And have you left the display ascent? Yes, we have. And everything is nominal. Yes, that's right. On Tesla, we have the message 1548, the um, emergency of uh, sector number three. What about phase one LED? Uh, no, it is not illuminated. This is a post-insertion uh, conversation between uh, the interpreter uh, who is relaying information up to Oleg Novitsky, the Soyuz commander aboard the MS-25. All of the uh, Soyuz systems are reported to be in excellent shape following its 8-minute, 46-second climb to orbit atop a Soyuz 2.1A booster, the crew in its preliminary orbit. And send the command. Copy. Coming up uh, on this two-day rendezvous will be uh, two burns in the next couple of hours called DV-1 and DV-2. That stands for delta velocity. Those are essentially uh, altitude raise burns that will stair-step an increase in the Soyuz altitude to begin to match that of the International Space Station. Mode enabled via Gareo command radio link. Uh, we confirm. Once again, uh, two days after uh, the launch was scrubbed because of uh, a low voltage rating in the Soyuz booster's first stage, the batteries in the first stage were replaced and retested. The launch was rescheduled for today and uh, went off without a hitch with liftoff at 7.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Central Time, 8.36 and 10 seconds a.m. Eastern Time. A perfect climb to orbit, no issues uh, during the three-stage performance of the Soyuz booster as it delivered Tracy Dyson, Oleg Novitsky, and Marina Vasilevskaya into their preliminary orbit for what today is a 34-orbit, two-day rendezvous to the station as opposed to what it would have been on Thursday, which would have been a two-orbit rendezvous. That is simply dictated by Johannes Kepler and his law of orbital mechanics and the position of the International Space Station relative to where the launch site of the Baikonur Cosmodrome was today versus Thursday. I am ready to report, as you know, data starting with parameter 17. 17, 16.9, number 18, 16.9, 19, 262, number 20, 0, number 21, 2, number 22, 323, number 23, 322, number 24, 13.9, number 25. Inaudible point three, number 26, 261.
Propellant 8 inaudible. Copy. Kazbeki MCC Moscow. Go ahead. МСС Москва, Казбек. Да. Компас будет закончен в 15.56. После окончания сеанса после контроля отсеков проводится. Можете, пожалуйста, мониторить компартменты и другие. Все солнечные антенны на МС-25 все выполнены в идеальной форме. And uh, the first uh, self-test, if you will, a diagnostics test on the CORE's automated rendezvous system on the Soyuz is being performed. And uh, reports uh, now from the Russian Mission Control Center, which has taken over control of the flight of Soyuz MS-25, indicates that all of the Soyuz systems are in excellent shape. Kazbeki, Moscow. How do you copy? We copy loud and clear, Kazbeki. While uh, we uh, have watched uh, the launch of Tracy Dyson to the International Space Station along with Oleg Novitsky and Marina Vasilevskaya, uh, aboard the International Space Station, NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara is preparing to open the hatch to the Dragon cargo ship, the SpaceX cargo ship that docked to the International Space Station at uh, 6.19 a.m. Central Time, 7.19 a.m. Eastern Time this morning delivering uh, some three tons of supplies and scientific experiments to the Expedition 70 crew. If you copy us, the past time on page 41, 1618-1637. Kazbeki, the ascent was nominal. All the structures have deployed. All parameters of the orbit are nominal. You can loosen your shoulder straps, open your visors, and also deactivate the thermal sensors. So we uh, allow you the actions in the box. As you can hear, uh, with everything operating perfectly on board the Soyuz spacecraft, the crew has been told to loosen uh, their restraint straps in their seats in the descent module, open their helmet visors, and begin to get comfortable as they begin uh, a two-day journey to the International Space Station. Do you copy me? This is the flight lead number 19. Yuri Ivanovich is calling Kazbeki. Guys, do you, do you copy me? This is Mission Control Houston with the Soyuz MS-25 safely in orbit following its uh, perfect climb to orbit. Now that it launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, all is well with three more crew members headed for the International Space Station. They will arrive at the station on Monday morning, temporarily increasing the station's population for 12 days to 10 crew members on board. That will set the stage for the departure of Novitsky, Vasilevskaya, and NASA's Laurel O'Hara on April 6th. But before that, docking coverage lies ahead, and we'll be back on NASA television with all of that on Monday morning with our coverage beginning at 9.15 a.m. Central Time, 10.15 a.m. Eastern Time, setting up a docking by the Soyuz to the Prashal node module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station at 11.09 a.m. Eastern, 12.09 p.m. 11.09 a.m. Eastern Time, 10.09 a.m. Central Time. So, the doubleheader for today is complete, a Dragon 
docked to the station carrying supplies for the expedition crew and the launch of three new crew members to the International Space Station followed in perfect fashion Dyson, Novitsky and Vasilevskaya on their way to arrive at the station on Monday morning. We'll be back with our coverage on Monday morning again beginning at 9.15 a.m. Central Time, 10.15 a.m. Eastern Time with rendezvous and docking coverage for Soyuz MS-25. Until then, have a great weekend. We'll sign off for now from Mission Control in Houston.